Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and this is my review of, you can, you can barely see it, but it's down here, the new Tim Holtz um, rotary media trimmer. But what I want to do before I get into showing that is just to lay a foundation and show what trimmers I'm used to because the rotary trimmer um, this first one that I have here um, by Tim Holtz is the first rotary trimmer I've ever used. They've been on the market for a while. Um, it's just a different style of trimmer, but not one that I'm accustomed to. So here's uh, why one person needs this many trimmers. I don't know, but I do have a fair few. Um, this is one of the first trimmers that I ever um, have crafted with. and. It's the Fiskars trimmer. It's really nice. It um, does have an arm that extends out and it's, um, you know, well labeled uh, down to the 16th of an inch. You have tick marks. The only thing with this is that I found the the blades just aren't as good, even, even when they're new. For some reason, they um, don't really hold their... Um, uh, sharpness very long and and also I, I I just don't think it cuts as cleanly as it once did. Um, the older blades were really fabulous but I've uh, maybe I replaced it with the wrong type I don't know it's Fiskars brand blades but for some reason I just haven't had really good success so why I keep this around still is that I actually use it to chi to cut chipboard so what I'll do because I don't have to be too worried about dulling the blade since I feel like the blade is already a little bit dull. I'll um, I'll just cut through my chipboard from one side, flip it over to the back, and then um, cut through again from uh, the opposite side. And uh, that's how I've been chip cutting my chipboard. One of the reasons why I wanted to get the uh, media rotary trimmer is because it is designed to cut through thicker materials like your medium weight chipboards. So maybe, you know, if that's successful, I can maybe do away with this. And in theory, the rotary blade um, is supposed to be pretty long lasting. So, um, so even cutting through thick materials like that hopefully won't wear down the blade. But I guess we'll see. Only time will tell on that one. The other trimmer that I have, this one is by Tonic. It's also pretty compact in terms of the width of it. And it has this very, very long arm. Um, you know, one thing I don't like about how Tonic does their extensions is that um, it doesn't actually keep this sort of lip so that when you are butting paper up against it, um, here it's kind of still free to go wonky. And as well, I find because the ruler isn't flush with, um, like it's not fully extending the ruler on this portion, it's a little bit harder to line things up super precisely. So I don't love that aspect of it. Whereas if you look at the Fiskars here, when I bring this out, this lip, it's flush with that. And then that means that my paper is flush with the ruler here. And I can actually, I can very precisely, you know, line up my piece of paper exactly where I want because it's, it's actually touching the ruler. Where here, it's actually um, the extension guide here it's actually about like a quarter of an inch or so lower than where your paper is so I find I, I don't like that aspect of um, the design of this but the blades really sharp I really love it for how thin it is and I often will just use this to cut little banner strips and whatnot it's it's convenient for that I'm now working my way towards uh, the trimmers, if you watch any of my videos, you know I use these pretty much in every video. So this is the uh, We Are Memory Keepers all-in-one, and it's really fabulous. I love it because it's got the scoring, 
and as well so if you're scoring you can actually butt something up against this piece here and then there are score lines and if you're cutting you just flip this over and then you can slide this and cut and similar to the Fiskars when you pull out the extension it truly just extends that upper rail and so when you are lining up for either scoring or cutting it's you can hit your mark pretty precisely and it does have tick marks that are labeled down to the eighth of an inch so i really love this for the convenience factor of all of the various different functionality that's built into it and as well um, for the fact that it's um, very clearly labeled and really easy to to use and i love um, the extension here that it really just extends um, this top portion so this would be my second favorite trimmer pretty much my go-to for for um, especially making card bases because you can uh, score and trim uh, cut your card right away the guillotine by Fiskars is my favorite favorite um, I love it because it's got um, tick marks down to the 16th of an inch which I I sometimes do use it has a what they call a um, self-sharpening blade so in theory if all you're doing is just cutting paper it, it shouldn't really dull the blade and it'll keep that nice sharp edge and so far I mean I've had it for years so and so far it's um, you know great and held up now the only thing that um, probably like really the only thing that I can fault this is that the lines here they are um, kind of painted on. It's not etched. It's not um, uh, like a permanent part of the plastic. And as such, you can actually see here it's it's fading a little bit where where you know I kind of use it the most. Um, got a little bit of a faded here. And probably eventually that might disappear entirely. So um, the lines up here, so you can see the difference here, how white and clear that is on that end, and then how faded and kind of spotty it is. And that's just that's just from use um, because some of that paint or whatever it is they put on here um, is kind of wearing away. So I think that's the only thing that's probably the downside. As long as these marks, and it is labeled on the bottom as well, so as long as those stay nice and clear, um, that should be, even if it fades in here, that shouldn't be a problem. But the blade's nice and sharp. It cuts really cleanly every time. Don't have to change out blades or, or anything. With the all-in-one tool, um, the blade is really great. It does um, cut really cleanly when it's new. Towards the end of a blade's life, you'll get some fuzzies in your cuts. The other thing with a trimmer that's like this is that when you cut it, the top part is super clean. And then on the bottom side, um, you there's a little bit of, a, of an edge that you can feel. And so I always feel like when I'm cutting, I do have to be mindful to always cut with the pretty side, the side I want to be showing, um, to make sure that that's face up because that's always going to get the cleaner cut. Um, whereas with the guillotine, it doesn't really matter. It looks good from the front and the back. So that's also... Um, one of the differences between the two but just um, because I noted it here this the um, you know the score lines they are grooves because you you do score it but up here this is painted as well um, but I don't think I don't think these you know you don't get a lot of wear and tear there so I don't think that's gonna actually fade um, so so that's the this would be my favorite trimmer um, because it uh, cut so cleanly, so consistently. It looks good on both sides. Don't have to replace the blade with the rearm memory keepers. 
I I always when I see them go on sale, I always just buy them because I know I'm going to be replacing it every few months. Um and so I don't want to be in a situation where my blade is dull and I need a new blade but I don't have one. So I try to look for sales on those and just always buy them because I know I will always need them. Whereas the guillotine, you know, there's unless you actually try to cut into something like like for example, um, you know, a metal ruler accidentally got under there or something, um, and you actually chip or bend the blade, uh, it, it should last a, a good, good long time. So as long as all you're doing is just cutting what it's meant to be cut, um, then you're good to go. So this is my favorite. So that's, that's sort of the, uh, where I'm coming from in terms of the types of trimmers that I like to use. The, this is the, um, uh, Tonic Studios, uh, designed by Tim Holtz, uh, rotary media trimmer, really heavy duty, uh, trimmer, but still pretty lightweight, pretty compact, all things considered. And it's, it's well designed. Um, the difference in how this trimmer works versus a guillotine versus the blade trimmers. So a guillotine is almost, it's almost like your scissors. It's just, you know, one blade, um, you know, coming down and cutting through from one end to the other, right? So guillotine, kind of like your a pair of scissors. The, these trimmers here, um, like the, uh, we are memory keepers all in one or like this one. These have a blade. There's a little blade and it's sort of a V. So the blade is kind of like that. So it's sharp on this edge and it's sharp on that edge. So you can cut going up, sliding it up the track or sliding it down the track. It works both directions and, and you should cut in both directions. And so that way you exercise um, both sides or ends of the blade. And so these just travel along this track. There's a groove so that you're not cutting into something and dulling your blade, but that's, that's where your blade is sort of um, uh, sinking into as it cuts. And um, that's how this one works. With a rotary, uh, trimmer. Uh, for this one, the blade is actually encased in this housing, but if I hold it like that, you might be able to see there's a round metal um, disc in there, and that's the blade. The blade is actually circular, and it has a sharp edge all the way around, and if you are, say, familiar with quilting or sewing, it's, it's very similar to a rotary cutter where um, you would use to cut fabric, for example. The difference between um, this and a rotary cutter is a rotary cutter, you, you need to be cutting into something like a self-healing mat. And it's the, it's the friction of the uh, circular blade against the self-cutting mat that sort of advances it and, and rolls that blade and cuts through the fabric that's in between the mat and the blade. With this, uh, I did watch Tim Holtz's video introducing it. This housing unit here does have gears. And so as it's sliding on this metal bar, as it's sliding, the gears are actually rotating the blade. So that just like these trimmers, um, there is also sort of um, this uh, area here underneath the blade that is just air so that it's not actually cutting into a mat that will dull the blade. So similar, that's similar to these where there's a groove that the blade is sort of following or cutting into so that it's not cutting into anything other than your paper. And that kind of helps your blade stay sharper for longer. So this is sort of similar um, to that in that it's not cutting into anything. It slides along this track. 
there is a little bit of give, like a little bit of wiggle that's intentionally designed that way so that this trimmer can actually take thicker materials like a medium weight chipboard, like corrugated cardboard, and um, cut through that as easily as it can cut through paper. So that's how it's designed, sort of similar to the other tonic um, trimmer that I showed. The extension, it's designed the same way, and I mean, it's even further down. It's like a half inch um, step down to this ruler. And so that's not my favorite aspect of this. I don't, I don't love that. Um, this does have, I feel like the ruler in general, like where they've designed how, where they've put the ruler markings, measurement markings, I feel like it's pretty far from where your paper is. So just these little things in terms of usability, I feel like are, they make a little um, bit of a difference just in being able to be fast with things. I feel like lining up my piece of paper and like hitting the mark exactly where I want is a little bit harder on this trimmer as compared to, let's compare it to this. So you see how where my paper is and where the numbers are, there's like very little gap. Not to mention that this has some groove lines, but let's say I was all the way out here. It's basically, you know, exactly where my paper ends is where the marking is. Not to mention out here, there's actually, there's grooves in the plastic. So there's actually grooves etched in the plastic every one eighth of an inch. Really, really easy to hit the mark every time exactly where I want it. Um, that's not exactly the case with these. So if I hold this up, um, you can see on the scoreboard itself, there's grooves here. So hitting every quarter of an inch, really easy because it's, it's on the groove. But if you want to hit an eighth of an inch, you really have to eyeball, that's about three eighths of an inch away uh, where the tick mark is from where my paper is. Or what I end up doing is I know an eighth of an inch is half of a quarter of an inch. So I, I just eyeball half, <laughs> half the distance between the score, um, the groove marks on the bed of the uh, trimmer. And that's not that precise. I I'm still eyeballing. And a sixteenth of an inch, no way. There's no way to, to get that from, from this <laughs> without really, really eyeballing things. Whereas, just for comparison, if you look at my, my favorite trimmer here, if we're trimming down something, I've got... They've got the measurements right here, exactly where my paper is. I can hit that those tick marks 100% all the time down to a sixteenth of an inch. So that's the sort of thing where, you know, when you go to cut something down, and especially if you have to, like, do a lot of cuts that are the same, I, I didn't know how much I appreciated that aspect until I started using the rotary trimmer where it's harder because this is my number one and it's really, really easy. My number two favorite is the We Are Memory Keepers and that's that's equally easy. It just doesn't have the sixteenths of an inch uh, marked. Um, and I've been trying to use the Rotary Media Trimmer as exclusively as I can the past, ever since I got it really, just to um, you know get some fair use out of it before I did this review. And I didn't realize, you know, how how great it was and how easy it is to line things up and, and get really precise measurements until I started using that and I saw the difference. So um, so that's one of the things that, that I noticed. Okay, so now in terms of actually getting some cuts in. So I've already scored some cardstock and I'll just uh, make some card bases and we'll get some cuts in. Now, my very first out of box experience with the um, rotary trimmer was 
really bad. Like, I got really bad cuts. <laughs> so it cut through just fine, but I was getting a lot of um, puckering, which I have never seen on a trimmer. But I honestly think it's because I sort of overthought it. I watched the review. I watched a couple of reviews. I watched the Tim Holtz one. I watched some other crafters. And my recommendation, if you do get this, is to... Um, well, first I will caveat, which I mentioned already, this is the very first rotary trimmer I've used. So if you've used one before, you're probably not going to have the the issues that I had just because I was overly um, conscientious about how I was using it, having never used a rotary trimmer before. And if you are in my shoes, what I would recommend is to, um, you know, watch all the things if you want, but when when you first kind of have a go at it, just try to use it as naturally as, as you would think to use it. Um, because it's not as complicated as I was making it out to be. So I think that if you have it in your head like I did, that you have to do all these like particular things to be successful, I think that tripped me up more than just cutting and like not, not overthinking it. So I've already scored my line here. This will be a top folding card. So I've scored it at, uh, this is a US letter sheet, 8.5 by 11. Along the 11 inch edge, I scored at 5.5. And, and now I'll cut at 4 and a quarter. Now, the nice thing is, is that this has been designed for some quick measurements. So you have, um, for the 4 and a quarter mark, instead of being a solid, uh, groove. It's actually a, a dashed groove, so it's easy to identify the four and a quarter mark and the five and a half mark. And as well, on on the platform, like molded into this plastic, are some common sizes like your uh, three by five, um, your four and a quarter by five and a half, your um, four by six, three by five, four by six, Five by seven, so you have some some indicators of some pretty common card sizes. They even have um, two by three and a half uh, as well. So lots of different sizes here. So that's one thing that's kind of nice. Um, there are some, and it's all like molded into the plastic, so that's not going to fade on you at all. Okay, so now we're cutting four and a quarter. So one of the things is um, this is just to safety bar to help you hold down the paper and to keep your fingers away from where where the blade's going to be traveling. And so I would just, you know, just cut. <laughs> so I'm getting much better cuts than than I did my first uh, time using the uh, trimmer. And one of the things that I was being, I think, overly conscientious about was trying to um, not put too much pressure and trying to um, put the right pressure in the right directions. But you can see there's still, it's not super duper clean. Can you see those like little fuzzy edges? So not this, my guillotine would never leave any of that. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes you can maybe wipe it away, the fuzzies, but you know, I've been wiping at it and it's still there. So I'm, I'm still not a pro at, at getting cuts on this, but it's not nearly as bad as, um, what I was getting on my first like day one out of the box. I am cutting into hammer mill 100 pound um, cardstock. Because there's a little bit of a give here, one of the um, one of the things to just kind of be aware of is you want to just hold it and just make sure that you're trying to kind of, you're not bending it outwards. If you're going to be bending it any in any direction, try to bend it more inwards so that it's meeting this um, metal plate that is um, uh, attached to the platform and cut you can cut in both directions but unlike the um, 
blade trimmer that's a V and, you know, sharp side here, sharp side here. It doesn't really matter what direction you cut in because the with the rotary trimmer, that circular blade is always rotating. Whereas with this style of trimmer, the blade, um, if you go upwards, you're only cutting from that from uh so if it's like that you have if it's like that your blade is like this so if you're cutting bottom towards up you're only cutting with this blade if you're from uh top going down you're only cutting with this blade so with trimmers like these it's good to go in both directions because you're going to exercise both blades and that way you don't have one that's super dull and one that's super sharp and never gets used and you'll kind of stretch you know the longevity of your blades if you use them in both directions with the rotary trimmer it's always rotating so you can cut in any direction you want and it's still going to equally exercise that blade all the way around. So I would cut in whatever direction is most natural, feels much most natural to you. And at the um, top and the bottom, you can rest, you know, you can push, there's a rail that you can push your paper against. So it might be more um, secure to always be uh, resting your cardstock against um, what the edge that you're cutting towards. So if I'm cutting down towards the bottom, then I want to rest my cardstock against the bottom, as opposed to if I cut um, going downwards, but my paper is resting against the top. I actually have to do a little bit more work to keep this flush against the top because the force downwards is more naturally going to try to move that paper off of its track. Whereas if it's already uh, braced at the bottom, the force going downwards, it's, um, it's just pushing it more against the bottom. So, um, but, you know, I think cut and hold your paper in whatever whatever position feels more natural to you and i would say like i said don't don't super overthink it um like i i almost do a better job of cutting when i'm cutting and talking <laughs> during this video and not actually because I'm, I'm not super thinking hard about what i'm doing and that was a really clean cut that that worked beautifully so um the only other thing in term that I have found anyways is to not put a ton of uh, downward pressure um, and don't put a ton of inward pressure. See how this blade does, um, oops, see how the blade does wiggle? Don't push overly hard um, into the other blade. I think that's what I was doing initially when I first got this out of the box and that's why I was getting that puckering because I was putting too much inward pressure being too conscientious of the wiggle and trying to keep it like super flush you know against this edge here but if you don't um see I still have still have just a little bit of fuzz but not a ton and there are some places that are you know, super sharp um, and clean. So a lot of this is um, just, you know, getting that nice, even, even cut all the way um, top and bottom. So what I have found though, is that there's not a, as big of a difference, but there is a little bit of a difference cutting you know the top side versus the bottom side um not not as big of a difference as if i were to cut with let's well let's cut one and then we'll see we can compare um because and this blade is not new it's actually probably very close to needing to be changed out but and they'll the the difference will be more pronounced the less sharp the blade is but um yeah this is so you can kind of 
see there's that lip almost. This is the back side. A little bit of that lip and it's all the way across. Whereas from the front, it looks it looks great. It's perfectly perfectly sharp. Looks um good. And so yeah. This is way, way more pronounced. And this blade is a little bit, I guess because I have a, a replacement blade. Let's, I'll sh show you what a new, the difference between a new blade and one that's a little bit more. I would cut a little bit more um, on this blade before actually changing, out, changing it out, but just to get a nice comparison of what this looks like with a brand new blade in. I don't mind just popping this in real quick. And we'll do a cut. And that would be one of the only things, complaints that I have with this trimmer is just that I do feel like I have to change out the blades <laughs> pretty often. So Pretty clean cut, and from the back side, not as pronounced of a lip, whereas there's the difference. Sharp, new, brand new blade, <laughs> old blade. You can see how it's rolled the cardstock underneath. So that's the difference between you know a new blade and, and a blade that's kind of close to needing um, to get swapped out. And but it cuts really cleanly. I I really like it. Uh, I just don't like that how often I have to change out the blade. <laughs> but that's just you know you know that getting one of these that that um, you're gonna have to buy replacement blades. So, um, my thoughts on the rotary trimmer, I think I'm, I'm still getting used to it. I, I haven't, um, perfected the cuts. You can see that's, that's not super clean and I can give it a wipe, but that's, it's not just like a little bit of fuzz that you can wipe away. I mean, that's that's not clean um, of a cut. Whereas we saw a brand new blade on the um, We Are Memory Keepers. This is all still the same paper. Give this a cut. So no fuzzies. Backside looks just as clean and pristine as the front side. Now I will say with the guillotine, one of the things I'm mindful of, whether I need to be or not, is that if you're like this, you're always cutting, you know, from this end of the blade downwards. So this this top end of the guillotine the blade is always getting exercised um, on every cut if, if you're always pushing your paper flush against the top here. I never say it in my videos, but occasionally you'll see me line something up down here <laughs> towards like the middle or bottom. And um, even if it's less precise because I'm lining it up against a, you know, a drawn line as opposed to pushing it up against something that's meant to be you know a good guide. Um, but the reason why I'll line something up in the middle like this and make my cut in the middle is just to exercise the the back half, the back half of my blade, because the top half is always getting exercised when I line something up at the top. So, and like I said, I don't know if it's necessary because it's a blade that's meant to keep its blade, keep its sharpness and hold its, um, hold its blade, uh, but... I still am aware of it and I still try to exercise this this back half <laughs> by doing that 
might not might not be um, that might be totally unnecessary to do, but just something that I keep in mind, and um, because I'm cognizant of these type of um, you know blade trimmers, and I always try to exercise these on both ends so always cutting up and then the next cut cutting down um so i just try to be a little bit conscious or aware of that on the guillotine as well but this is why the guillotine is my favorite because this is this is as once this is you know attached and um and just you know in a pile i can't i honestly can't tell you know which um, cut edge is the factory cut edge versus which one was cut on the guillotine because they're they're both that that uh, crisp whereas I can pick up you know this and I can tell right away this is this has been cut on one of my trimmers and this is the factory um, because first off I can feel that slight like lip the slightly rolled edge from the back and it's visible I mean you can see it too. It's not just, oh, it's not perceptible um, unless you actually rub your finger. I can actually see that rough edge. Now that's easily fixed um, and it's a lot, like I said, it's a lot better than my first cuts. But this sort of stuff, super easy to fix with just an emery board that's got a really fine grit to it because you can just sand that right off and it'll be super smooth. Um, and, and then, you know, then it'll get to the point where it's really not perceptible, um, unless you actually look hard and, and feel for it. So from the top, you can see it's, um, nice and, nice and smooth now. So, um, so I don't necessarily mind doing a little bit of that here and there. But occasionally I'll get really, really clean cuts um, on the um, rotary trimmer here. So I know that it's capable of doing super clean cuts. I just don't always know how to replicate that so that I can consistently get clean cuts. And I feel like that's one of the things that is um, kind of different with this style of trimmer for me just not being super used to it and that is that I feel like there's a lot of uh, different variables that can impact the um, your cuts so there's the because of this play here you know there's how much pressure you're putting downwards how much pressure you're putting inwards how fast or slow you're moving. I don't know um, if that has a lot to do with the results that I'm getting. I try to do it in one smooth motion just to um, try to get as... Because if you're starting and stopping, I can understand if that's going to introduce some um, jagged edges. But I am trying to um, just not put a ton of pressure in any direction. Just, you know glide it as smoothly through as possible and sometimes I get really nice clean cuts sometimes not so much um, but I have gotten and that's one of the reasons why I feel like for me it's more of a user error slash learning curve where the other trimmers are very consistent the blade trimmer yeah it will dull over time and so the cuts will uh, get a little bit more um, fuzzy the backside that rolled sort of lip will get more pronounced but that's a little bit predictable it's not you know that's just the blade getting dull over time and um, performing a little bit differently as opposed to from one cut to the to the very next cut getting different outcomes so and but and that is what I'm experiencing with the uh, rotary trimmer. So this here now is thicker. This is 120 pound, and like nice. See how that section? Look how sharp that is. But you go down a little, and then look at that. So 
it's this spottiness that is why I think it's something with me and um and how I'm using it that is producing those because it's not the blade I wouldn't think um, unless there's dull spots on the blade, which maybe there is, but it's brand new, so I wouldn't think that the blade is dull. It's meant to, it's meant to last. Um, but the fact that I'm getting super clean and clean on both sides too, you know, there's stretches. I would say half of this is like super clean, clean on both sides, razor sharp edge, like a factory cut, right? But there are parts that are like you know, what a trimmer like this would produce when it's about ready to get replaced. <laughs> so the fact that I'm getting both results on a single cut is what's a little bit perplexing, uh, perplexing to me. And here, um, on the opposite end, same thing. Like if you look at the back, you have a little bit of that rolled edge, some fuzzies, um, not, not the cleanest, but again, like I said, it's considerably better. I wish I had kept, kept the, um, those first initial cuts just to show you. I don't even know if I can replicate it because I don't even know what, what all I was doing <laughs> that first, like out of box experience. Uh, I'm going to try to replicate it. So I think I was pushing down pretty hard. Uh, yeah, I think that is what I was doing. So let's see if it, it's not quite as pronounced, but there's a little bit of puckering on the cardstock. No, it's kind of hard to see. Um, it was way worse than than what I'm seeing here, but um, but it does cut through pretty effortlessly. Blade's really sharp. I did cut medium weight chipboard, and it cut through that no problem. I I have made several cuts of um, medium weight chipboard. I I hope that hasn't dulled uh, this, but I've also cut. Uh, oh yeah, that that cut really nicely. Look how look how nice that is. So so that was 120 pound. Now this is a um, gel print. <laughs> on to rice paper, really thin stuff. This is like tissue paper here. And you know those commercials where you cut like, like for the Ginsu knife and they cut through a rubber boot and then, <laughs> and then they take that knife and they cut through a tomato just to prove like how, how sharp it, the knife stays. And this is my equivalent. So I've just cut, not quite a boot, uh, 120 pound. I think it's, it's pretty standard, but I've done this with cutting chipboard and then right away cutting uh, copy paper. So, oh, actually it didn't cut. Oh, I'm surprised. I've cut through, I've cut through rice paper before. It might be because this rice paper is a little bit wrinkled. Oh, look at that. Totally did not cut. <laughs> so let's try. Let's try copy paper. Let's see how it does. Just one sheet of copy paper here. All right. I think it's because that rice paper is a little bit crinkly. But see, cut through. Just regular printer paper. This is a packing slip. So. Um, so the blade stays nice and sharp, um, and so far, my thoughts. Um, well, I bought it mostly because I want to cut through chipboard, because I do like to use chipboard on my albums and my 3D makes, like the perpetual calendars that I've been making, and I don't, um, I don't like having to you know, use, keep this thing around just, just to, just to slice through chipboard. Um, especially, especially since that blade eventually is going to get super dull where it won't even be able to do that anymore. So I like this cause this can cut through chipboard in one, in one go. I don't even, I don't have to make two passes at it. 
And as well, um, in theory, the blade is supposed to stay sharp and sort of be self-sharpening in, in a similar way as to the guillotine. So I feel like so far that's been the case. I just for everyday use, I feel like there are some um, usability challenges with uh, hitting, you know, hitting exactly, you know, the mark that you want. And as well, I don't, I wouldn't use this personally if I had to measure anything beyond six inches because what's going to happen is. If you're trying to hit eight inches, your paper is hovering over that eight inch, uh, over this end of the ruler by about half an inch or so. And so if you want to know if you're like exactly on the eight inch mark, I'm always tempted to push my paper down. But by pushing your paper down, um, that, that length is actually, you know, longer than eight inches, what probably immeasurable, you know, not, not a huge big material difference in a lot of um, paper crafting but if you're making something like a 3d construction and you have like four sides of a box they need to be pretty precise to to all fit together and so something that's a little bit off is could could actually make a difference even if it's just that little bit and so i find like hitting hitting the mark is really really hard hitting the mark for even hitting an eighth of an inch is hard on this because that eighth inch tick mark is, you know, up here where about three eighths of an inch, maybe half an inch away from where my paper is. So I don't love that. It's a lot easier to hit an eighth of an inch on my We Are Memory Keepers and on the uh, Fisker's guillotine. And my guillotine goes down to a sixteenth of an inch which I um, use maybe more often than most, but I, I do use it and, and um, this, this doesn't even have a tick mark for sixteenths of an inch. So, um, you know, neither, neither this, this for that matter, but at least this one's like really easy to hit the one eighth inch mark. And when you pull out the extension, I mean, your paper, your paper is right there right there with the tick marks whether you're looking at the drawn lines painted lines or you're looking at the grooves that's that's actually like molded into the plastic and that's even more precise because you you can really see like where where your paper um is lined up and whether you're on that groove or not so you know i find those little things um, really, I feel if it's your primary cutting, it really makes things uh, go a lot faster if you are the sort of crafter who likes to be really precise with their measurements, um, which, you know, is kind of uh, like me. <laughs> um, so I feel like this really slows me down because I like to be precise, but this makes it hard to be precise. Whereas the this trimmer and my guillotine really easy to be precise with um with these on hitting you know the marks that I want every single time the most precise is the guillotine um you know with this one the the lines are kind of flat so I never know you know am I am I aiming for the middle of the scoring grooves or am I aiming for like one end or the other end? There's, there's a little bit of uh, play there, but you know, um, all things considered, if I need to be really precise and that's probably why if, if I'm, if you ever see a um, mini album tutorial of mine, I'm, I'm probably using my guillotine to make my cuts <laughs> because that's the that's the cutter that is going to yield the cleanest cuts and the most precise cuts. So usually if it's a 3D make or a mini album or something like that, um that's that's my go-to is my guillotine. Um this it still has a place in my craft room. I I have 
hope still that I can get better at producing like consistently clean cuts because I know it's possible. I've seen it. <laughs> I just can't, I can't hit that all the time. And, um, but in terms of usability, I just don't think, especially with th the way that they've like drawn this, I just don't think this is going to ever be like my go-to, um, because it's, I'm just too slow at lining it up and, um, the distance that my eye has to travel for, to line up my paper, it, it makes it really hard for me, especially since I do often, if you don't often measure down to the one eighth or one sixteenth, no problem, because the grooves on here are at a quarter of an inch, and that makes it really, really easy. But if you do ever use eighth of an inch, um, I feel like this is way harder, and one sixteenth of an inch is not even possible because it's not marked, so you have to guesstimate. Um, so uh, I don't see this replacing my Fiskars, um, but I do still feel like there's good value to have it because it will cut that medium weight chipboard. And that, that's why I got it because I was mostly interested in having it to, um, be able to be a little bit more multi-purpose and uh, handle cutting through the chipboard, handle cutting through other materials as well, where maybe I don't want to, uh, like this, this can't even really, you know, fit, I don't think medium weight chipboard under there. Uh, and I don't want to risk my dulling my guillotine blade. <laughs> so I don't, I don't put uh, chipboard through there either. I just, I just stick to paper and cardstock on my guillotine. So this is going to be my, um, you know, anything that's slightly thicker, this will be my go-to. So those are my thoughts on the, um, the Tim Holtz rotary media trimmer. If you have tips and tricks that can help me improve, um, my cuts, I would definitely welcome that. So, so leave that in the comments. If you have the trimmer, um, I would love to know what your thoughts are and what your favorite trimmer is out there. Um, and I'm chalking this up to more just learning curve because this is my very first rotary trimmer, paper trimmer. So I think it, there's just, you know, some ramp up time for me because I've just never used one before to getting used to it. But I have hopes that, that, um, that I'll get there and I'll be able to produce really clean cuts eventually. So, um, so no regrets on buying it. It just, um, even once I get those uh, perfectly clean cuts consistently, there's still some, you know, niggly little, you know, detail things that won't ever really, you know, make this my go-to, but still a very, very high quality trimmer. And, um, so I'm happy with it so far. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks so much, and until next time, happy crafting, and have a fabulous day. Bye!